corruption in the Democratic Republic of Congo. The Democratic Republic of Congo, DRC, is repeatedly considered one of the poorest states in the world by different rankings. Along with that, according to Transparency International, the DRC is also among the most corrupt states in the world. Although there are many possible causes for poverty, the great diversity of corruption practices both on state and individual levels is undoubtedly one of the main ones. The abundance of natural resources like oil and minerals in the state corresponds to the prevalence of the oil and mining sectors which are susceptible to corruption as well. This paper will argue that the high levels of corruption in the DRC contribute to the state's underdevelopment manifesting in the diminishing rule of law, low standard of living, and violation of people's rights. The problem of corruption lies in the structure of the governance, regime, culture, and the instability of the political order itself, leading to the lack of the rule of law. As Tateka and Edmund state, corruption can even be perceived as a part of the culture and informal institutions serving as a moral contract between the actors. Therefore, even though some actions were taken to eliminate corruption, in reality, there has never been enough political will and desire to do so. The laws remain unapplied and can be theoretically prevented from implementation by ruling elites. Another reason is that these anti-corruption institutions are indeed corrupt. As everyone benefits from corruption to a greater or a lesser extent, there is not much sense in an actual fight against it. Lastly, the lack of autonomy of these agencies from the leader of the DRC, who is one of the main targets of the anti-corruption policies, is self-explanatory. Hence, corruption is extensively incorporated into governance, and the attempts for its elimination appear to be in vain. The rule of law and constitutionalism are under tremendous pressure. Following the line of Asemoglu and Robinson, the extractive political and economic institutions, created under the rule of Mobutu, continue to prosper till now. Although the constitution of the DRC assumes it is a state of law based on democracy with the existence of separation of powers, in reality, it is not the case. The monopoly of the head of the state over resources and his respective unequal distribution of them to the branches led to insufficient financing and, thus, increased corruption. Furthermore, as there are virtually no sanctions for this fraud, it gives rise to a sense of impunity. Thus, the rule of law as one of the main components of political order is significantly violated if not ceased its existence. The violation of people's social, economic, and political rights, as well as poor standard of living, are other unfortunate consequences, which are somewhat connected to the distortions in the constitution of the DRC. Due to the corrupt practices and tax evasion of the elites, the budget left for welfare projects and ensuring citizens' well-being is limited. Low wages, absence of protection resulting in high levels of violence, and ongoing epidemics contribute to the unhealthy climate in the state. Moreover, it cultivates corruption on the local level as people do not earn enough money to exist and thus see such methods as the only possible way to survive. The socioeconomic situation in the state is also critical. According to the World Bank, less than half of Congolese have access to water resources or basic facilities, and about 70% live below the poverty line. Thus, it leads to the absolute absence of faith in the government and state institutions. As for political rights, the declared democracy experiences a crisis. Although the elections should take place regularly, they are constantly postponed or abolished due to the inability to finance the Electoral Commission. Even the judiciary branch of power, usually considered the most independent, is distrusted. Different surveys identify that less than a quarter of the DRC population believes in fair treatment at the courts. Another factor following that is the rising political engagement because of its prospects and relatively easy way to enrichment. For instance, in 2011, there were almost 19,000 candidates for the seats in the National Assembly. Another inference from the situation is the apparent disinterest in other professions, such as healthcare workers, teachers, and so on. Hence, the violation of political and socioeconomic rights and poor living conditions of the citizens of the DRC is the direct consequence of corruption. To conclude, the extractive political and economic system of the Democratic Republic of Congo is continuously deteriorating due to widespread corruption in the state. Being arguably the main reason for underdevelopment and the poverty of the nation, 
it negatively influences the political system and challenges the rule of law. At the same time, the people do not have access to their basic needs and exist on the brink of survival. Although some attempts have been made to change the situation, they were undermined by the unwillingness of the elites.